Every corridor, every corner, every ward. There is grief over the dead. We are struggling to get it under control. Please cover your nose and mouth your elbow when you walk or sneeze. A shocking scene after the death of George Floyd, why so many poured into the street. The nation erupted into scenes of chaos. Dozens of American cities up in flames. With banks burned, highways shut down, and City Hall on fire. You're hearing the updates, you're seeing the news, you're hearing the sirens. It's created a lot of fear. It's created a lot of frustration. What do you say to those people who are really down and are looking for some optimism? Well, people should never give up. I was in a really bad situation. Doctors knew that my situation is, is one of the worst they had. When they medically induced me into coma, I said, I can't give up. I, I was like thinking to myself, I must get up. I must live. I must live to save other people. I must live for my family. I must live for my future. I have a lot more to do. My lungs were completely infected. And uh, when the doctor saw what was going on, they said, you're not gonna go home, we are keeping you here. I must say that uh, praying in these days and knowing that people around in the community were praying, people undertook to do special good deeds, special mitzvot, gave me a lot, a lot of support, a lot of uh, encouragement, a lot of positivity. But I knew that if I didn't have that positive, um, you know, will to fight, I would have given up and I wouldn't be here today. Really we need to focus on how this is affecting me personally and knowing me personally I've had times where I've, I've had up times, I've had down times. This is just a time that I'm also going to get through. We need to understand that there is, uh, that nobody wants to feel alone. That's the beauty about it, that we felt alone and feeling alone, who you go to? To God. When you go to God, you don't feel alone. Turn the news off. Don't, 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 that's not, that's not reality. That, that's not reality. Reality is helping your neighbor, being thankful, that's reality. Everyone's lesson is different, right? So obviously some of us will have overlap, but I think that we, this happened for each of us to learn and to grow in a different kind of way, of course. Every day you get up like, we're here for another day. We've got to do something and we have to smile through it. In order to create that happiness, you got to work on yourself. you got to work every day and every moment. Simcha is a word that's thrown around, right? Be the simcha, be the simcha. What do you mean be the simcha? How can I be the simcha? It's a disaster. It's hard, it's annoying, and I think that a person has to accept that feeling. Okay, I do feel pretty loudly. And say, let me see if I can get to a better place where I accept it with love. I believe it's probably those emotional challenges that keep us from getting up every day with a smile. Every morning I wake up and I say, I am alive. Because if you just sit there and think the whole time about how horrible the situation is, of course you'll be miserable. So a person has to take every single thing that is good in life and they have to hold on to it and save it because those down moments are coming. You just stop and think, oh my gosh, what does Hashem want from us? I mean, this is something that's completely out of the ordinary. Nobody in their right mind would have dreamed that the world would be on lockdown like this. I think that we will always know life as BC before Corona and AC after Corona, I think. You have to internalize that life can change in one instant. And I think the moment we realize that we are not in control and we delegate and we just say, God, I'm your puppet. If you realize that somebody up there is pulling all the strings, then there's no need to worry because whatever he's doing is for the best. You have this happen and this happen. While it's happening, you don't see the hand of God necessarily. At the end of this thing, we're gonna look back and say, wow, the world went through a huge transformation. But you have to keep an open mind and know that sometimes you're not gonna see that hand of God till the very end. There's an, uh, a word called lehodot, which means to say thank you. But that same word in Hebrew also means to admit. And if we've learned anything from Corona and from the protests, it's to admit that not everything is in our control. And when a person can admit that, then suddenly they become so much more thankful because they realize in every area of their life they were given something that maybe they didn't have to be given. You know, we felt like we could conquer the moon and then we realized we couldn't even conquer something that we couldn't even see. A really great practice that I've been uh, taking on, uh, either in the evening or in the morning, is a gratitude list. Just writing five to 10 things that I could write down and say, this is what I'm grateful for. You will value the most important things in life 
far more than the insignificant, trivial, material things that we were constantly paying so much attention to. I think that has awakened a lot of people uh, to think the purpose of life, what it really is expected from them, what do they want to achieve. For a lot of people, the most important thing was, you know, to show off. I bought a new car, I bought a new dress, you know, the whole time people were busy posting pictures and uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, I don't know, wherever. Today people became much more humble. They became much more centered on values and uh, things that are going to help them to have a better life, really better life, not just a life of show off, of, uh, you know, making believe or trying to impress others. It's really thinking about my own growth, my own life. Do we really need to go out to restaurants every night? Do we need to fly all the time? Uh, is it nice to just spend time with your close friends and make a dinner at home? I'm so lucky. God gave me another chance, another opportunity to give, to love, to grow, and to make an impact on the world. When we look back at our ancestors, we speak about their mesirut nefesh, their self-devotion. We never had the chance, you know, we live in a society of wealth. Everything is available and accessible and so easy in Israel and the States. For the first time, we had our chance of mesirut nefesh, our nisayon. Our, you know, that in that period, we can have our own self-devotion for the first time. I think it's, it's, it's even inspiring in a way. And to recognize that I woke up and I took a breath and I'm thankful for that breath. That's amazing. You only did that once Corona came around. When we wake up in the morning and we thank God for giving back our soul, for giving us our health, we say it automatic. It became part of you know, the daily prayer and we just say it out of habit. But all of a sudden you wake up and you think and you realize how much could go wrong if God is not watching over us. There's a lot of sadness in the world. But at the same time, there's also a lot of opportunity to, to step into a space and spread positivity, just, or to sp just be there and be listening here to show support. Everyone's traits, character traits, good or bad, were kind of put under, under a magnifying glass during this COVID-19 crisis. So if someone has good qualities and is generous and likes to give, it was definitely highlighted even more. People who put out kindness, they see that they, it was good and they got back energy from it. And what you put out, you get back in. Sometimes you forget to say good job, or sometimes you forget to, to communicate with people that you love. And life, life passes and you're busy and you're busy and you're busy and you're missing the point of living and the point of sharing. Because we are here not for ourselves, we are here to share. We are here to bring growth to others. People need us. No one has to be the hero. You have to be their hero. You don't have to change the whole world, but you can change a person's world. Everything in this world is for the glory of Hashem. The internet, especially, can be looked at by, by many as a negative thing. And here, during the last few months, we saw what a positive, incredible force it can be. Hashem created all of us, B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. We need to be like Hashem. Hashem is, uh, Hashem is in us, and we need to have the midot of Hashem. The holiest, most godly way to live your life is to live your life in the service of others, your fellow human beings, your neighbors, your friends, your family, and also Hashem, also God. This pandemic should show the world that we have to be closer to each other. Life is life, no matter who it is. You go save someone, you fight for someone's life. Especially now, we should put away all our disagreements and fight for saving the world. Um, if this had happened 20 years ago, we would not have had the connection that we had now. Even in isolation, we were still connected. Spending quality time, having meals together, something that most of us never get to do because we're too busy working. The good thing is that we're having this special time to be with family and connecting with our kids and spouses in ways that where we never had opportunities to. So I think that it's something that the kids will take away with them for the rest of their lives, and so, so are we. And this is what the beauty of Shabbat gives in each family. And I know of thousands and thousands of families in Russia who took this opportunity and they started a new tradition in their home that Friday night they sit around the table. It's a special kind of intimate atmosphere, special chalot, fresh bread, fish, and this, and the singing. People were always rushing, rushing, trying to catch competition. They're going to miss a phone call. Shuchan Shabbat, you're focusing on next week. They realize actually that we are missing this peace of mind, 
this beauty of Shabbat that we have once a week as a present from God. Every person will walk away from this having their priorities set straight. You know, we, we all think about our life, nothing is stable, and that's your opportunity to think what's really important, what really matters, what's the essence of our life. You know how people say, have a nice day, don't have a nice day, make it a great day, it's not gonna just become a great day, it's what you put into it, it's what you do, it's how are you gonna be the reason that people smile. The sense of responsibility has got new meaning. I may be okay, but what about others? Others can suffer. Like we, we just seen, we're seeing resilience, you know what I'm saying, of humanity by, by this. And, and I feel like, you know, for everybody to look at this and may, may be able to say like, now there's going to be hope because we see how much we care about each other. The situation has created a wave of people that are now searching for something that you hold so dearly in life, which is God. They're asking the most important and fundamental questions that anyone could ask in their lifetime. What is your message to them? Lean into it. You know, if you have a feeling, you have an emotion, you, you're curious, stay curious. People that are searching for answers for this, I think are finding it in God. God is something that's very good to search for because God is the answer to a lot of questions. All of us should be questioning and never stopping asking questions. If you don't question, you don't get your answer. The Jewish religion is based on, on the question. We're, we, we thrive in the questions. It's less really about the answers, but the questions that we ask. So I would suggest to continue and never stop until you get your answer. Where is God with all that's going on? Let's spell it out, you know, verbatim. And the answer is, look at all the good around. Look at all the people stepping up, stepping out, and really rising to the occasion. There is a God in this world. There is somebody that is, there's a bigger plan that I may not know what that is. So my finite mind can perhaps understand every single detail, every intrig every minute idea and reasons. But it's always important to remember that you are in charge of yourself. You can choose to react in a positive, productive way. So in the Talmud, and I'm gonna be paraphrasing this, is it says that it's less about how things are, but rather how you are, how you perceive things. Times are tough. Life is not always meant to be easy. It's what we make of it that really sets us apart. What would be your lesson, again, Jewish, not Jewish, to someone who is struggling with the current reality and wants a little, to grasp onto a little optimism and hope, what would you say to them? Just, everybody's had ups and downs on a, on a personal level. So if we hold on to the good, even while we're going into the bad, then it'll carry us, and then hang on, we'll be able to hang on to it. As long as you have symptom, as long as you're content and you're happy, you'll get through a hard time. Why are you wasting the time worrying? Get up and do. Get up and go. We have so many problems right now, we can all be uh, helpful to others. Each individual that's listening to us can be the cure, the remedy for someone else. Just look, up, search for them, find them. They'll feel better, but you'll feel better too. We all in this terrible disease pandemic that we have to fight together. Thanking Hashem every single day that this thing is over and we're safe and healthy. It's our families and friends are all good and uh, working on Shemir HaLashon, actually showing more attention and kindness to everyone around us. You're here to make people happy and God will find the tools to give you to continue. Do not give up. And a lot of people are going through a lot of doubt, a lot of fear, a lot of panic. But you don't have to go through that yourself. You can show up in that, in this darkness, and be the light. We've learned over the last three months the power of each and every human being. You are incredibly powerful. One person can change the whole world. Imagine what a million people can do. Because somebody out there is waiting for your greatness. We are in charge of ourselves in the way that we react to the situation around us. Take a break and realize you're not in control. Sometimes you have to say it out loud to yourself just to remind yourself the obvious. God wanted us to want to do the mitzvahs and to rise to that challenge. Have a responsibility when it comes to unity to really care about the other. Try to see the best in everything. See God in everything, grow with God. There's a God up in heaven who loves us all, no matter what background we're from, Religion, race, creed makes no difference. The mission of this video was to give all the honor to God. The entire crew, uh, the staff, the, everyone is going as an assistant. During this situation, we understood that we are really not in control of anything and 
if it is something there that it is in control, it's him. People are panicking, people are worried, people are scared. What's going to happen next? And the real answer, I think, is that we have to trust in something above. We have to believe that there's something much greater than everything that is going on around us and much greater than ourselves that is really holding our hands. Trust in the Creator is something that gives you a lot of energy, a lot of positivity, and this helps you go through the hardest times. And then you realize that these challenges are actually there to make you even stronger. Let's trust God, because trusting God includes trusting His master plan and trusting His timing. We need to understand that what unites us is the belief in one God, and we are one.
Imagine all 